Hello, and welcome to this next edition of the Growth Strategist Chat Series. I'm delighted to be joined today by Nancy Duarte. Nancy, how are you? I'm great, Simon. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. And we've spoken a couple of times. So you're number two global guru.org communication expert. You're principal of Duarte Inc., I think the largest one of the largest Silicon Valley design firms, probably the largest. I think you're one of the largest female employers in the area. You're a multi-award winning influencer of major brands like Apple, Cisco, Google. You a keynote speaker. You've, re- re- you've written four books, Slideology, Data Story, Resonate, and Illuminate. I've read and I've used many times Resonate. I think that was an Amazon record selling book. So uh, so that was a lot to introduce, and it's a real honor to talk to you. And so maybe in the next few minutes, just give a background as to you, your work, and ha- how you got to where you are today. Yeah, what a great question. So I um, didn't get here the normal ways, definitely not with a golden spoon in my mouth. Um, I was actually raised in an economically and emotionally starved environment and got married when I was just 18 and popped wow. down to the Silicon Valley with no degree and a little kid on my hip. Fortunately, married the man of my dreams. Um, but, you know, I think the big thing is, is to be a lifelong learner. I just devoured anything. So when I started to show up into the offices of these CEOs, they never questioned that I didn't have an MBA. You know, the Silicon Valley is built on the backs of people with MBAs. And so I just kind of showed up, well-learned, um, smartest person. They were learning uh, from me. And then that's really how the business grew was through service. We just served and served and served. So 32 years we've been doing this now. Wow. Um, so we will either um, we will either like write and produce your next great talk or teach you how to do it for yourself. So okay. uh, it's just been an honor to serve for this many this many years. By the way, the internet thinks I'm 70. I'm not. I don't know where it gets its information. But Definitely not 70. Not 70. I've only been doing this 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so that's cool, and uh, so you you must have seen a lot of changes during that period. I mean, you know, when I wrote, I, I read, you know, I bought and read, and resonate, and I used it quite a lot in my, you know, I've been a CEO and I've been a coach and consultant, a mentor, advisor, and you know, just around, you know, how we use PowerPoints and different types of communication. You must have seen a whole shift in the way in in the best practices. I mean, what. What, what have been the, the biggest changes you've seen around how communication is used over the last 20 years, say, the biggest changes? Yeah, I love that question. So if you think about communicating as a three-legged stool, right, there's the story, there's the visuals that you use, whether they're verbal or actual visual, and then there's how you deliver it, like how you come across. And there's been transformation in all of them. So if you think about, were well, you too young to remember back 32 years ago, that presentation tools were so ugly. I mean, they were just so ugly. The default was built by engineers. There was no such thing as UX back then. So it took like a hammer and an anvil to make your slides look decent. And so that's how our business started was let's craft, let's recraft what you've built, break apart your visuals and explain them in a clearer way. And then when we got into story, story had not been used in business. It was all facts and information. And story is one of the most powerful communication devices to influence. And then with delivery, everything's changing so quickly. Like if you think pre-TED.com or pre-Inconvenient Truth, um, you couldn't point to a lot of people that were great presenters, especially Mm -hmm. scientists. They could always be like, well, I don't have to be awesome because nobody in my industry is awesome. But now you can find a bunch of TED Talks where the scientists are awesome and they are changing the world. And so the expectation of audiences is probably the biggest change. Mm. If you're speaking and you're terrible, like let's just say you're at a big event like South by Southwest, happened to me, all of a sudden like 50 people busted in the doors. I'm like, I'm sorry, that was so distracting. I have to ask what just happened. He goes, ah. Someone tweeted that you were super interesting. Like, oh my God, you guys just got up and left and came. They're like, yeah, (laughs) the people will vote with their feet. Like they don't want to waste their time. They don't want you to waste their time. So the pressure on the presenter to be empathetic, to bring value, like they're not going to give you an hour if you're not giving them an hour of value back. Exactly. So I I think people know now that you've prepared and care. And now they know you're winging it and you didn't care enough to bring value for my time. You didn't value my time well enough to yeah. prepare and package it in a way that's digestible. Yeah. No, I think I think you're right. And 
you know, I've, I have I remember in the early days as, a, as an exec, you know, it would be death by a PowerPoint and you'd have like 15 bullets on a slide and nobody reads anything. Like nobody reads stuff. It's about, you know, it's about the imagery and it's about the delivery and it's about the connection and it's about the belief in, in what the person is saying, not so much the person. And it's all about the connection. And uh, so... What, what what do you think is what could come out of the fact that, you know, this the world is now going through a real, I call this a circuit breaker year, right? I mean, it's a year nobody's going to forget. And it means we're predominantly online and it means we're not standing up on the big stages. How do you think, in what different ways do you think communication is going to be impacted by what we're seeing right now? The whole world is different. I think that... Um, People, uh, like at the exec level for internal communications, you've got to let your kids crawl all over you and level the playing field and make it really clear that you're in it with them. Yeah. Yet, we're also seeing, you know, green screening kits being shipped to exec homes and they're doing more formal kind of yeah. keynotes. Every single company that we've worked with, because we've flipped a lot of events to virtual now, every single one of them said the feedback from the audience on the after uh, experience. Like if you couldn't be there, you could yeah. watch it. It used to be you just watched it if you weren't there. Now it's made primarily for remote viewing. Yeah. The audience feedback on the companies that's doing it well is coming yeah. back very strong. Whereas they're all saying now that some sort of remote experience is going to be wired into every event in the future. Yeah. So yeah. it's here to stay. When there's fatigue, yeah. I think I'm hoping somebody's doing brain science about how different it is. If if you were physically here, Simon, in the room, my brain would be firing really differently. Yes. I'm looking at you as a square on my machine. So, 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 what, so what do you think is happening to your brain? Is, it's a, is, our, is it more exhausting because we have to be more alert and more focused? It, it, see, I, I find myself, yesterday I was on about four and a half hours of Zoom, and I was zonked last night. It, it, is it just challenging us in a way that we hadn't thought about before, challenging our brains? Yeah, I think, it, I mean, it's a flat image. It's like talking to your TV all day. And when, when you're trying to be um, effective in this medium, you have yeah. to bring more of yourself. You have, to, you have to consciously make your heart warm. Like when yeah. I look at that little camera, I look at the little face, I have to be like, my heart, I won't come across as authentic or interested if I don't have the energy yeah. to be and there's distractions, you know, there's little alerts going on. Yeah, yeah. Vacuuming or whatever. And yeah. It just takes a lot more concentration and concentration to brain gain. Yeah. Um, but for me, I, I just think it's critical. All my, I do, I put a lot of energy into my internal communications. I do them on video. I think yeah. in this season, really important for people to see your face, your expression, because they could read almost anything in the email. Yeah, and so I just think how we show up as leaders is extra important right now. Absolutely. So back to your to back to the books. Like, so I've read Resonate, and but but what about Illuminate, and um, particularly Illuminate and Data Story? Maybe talk to us a little bit about the premise of Illuminate, and you know what what was what was the core focus of that that book? Yeah, you know uh, we go through economic cycles about every eight years or so. So this one was very delayed and surprised everyone from yeah. yeah like crazy. So about four years ago, uh, Patty Sanchez and I wrote Illuminate and yep. we wrote it knowing that, um, that leaders would need some sort of a story model in their head to drive change, especially yep. if there was a crisis, especially if there was a big invention, a big initiative. Yeah. And so we broke down, we studied movements and stories. So if you take storytelling and movements, we overlaid story over movements to see yep. what happens when you have to do sustained communication to change people in mass. Yes. And that's what we built um, with um, Illuminate, where you use speech, and story, ceremonies, and symbols to, yep. um, you know, drive epic change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, data story was fun to write. And for that one, I looked at thousands of data slides from the highest performing brands in the world that my agency works with. And okay. It was interesting. The thing about a slide is you have a chart and you have a whole bunch of words associated with the chart on the slide. So um, yeah. and I analyzed what are the verbs? What are the adjectives? What are the adverbs? What, what do they say? What do they mean? Why did they choose them? And that created this beautiful body of work, nothing like it, um, around how, how you can make it so your decision making goes up and down much quicker, yep. based solely on the words you associate uh, with your charts. Okay. Um, so that one was fun. And I have yeah. a, 
online free book called Slide Docs. So you were talking about how people put like too many words yeah. on the bullet. So what we did is we're like, well, we're doing that for a reason. Yes. And when you put more information on a slide, it can travel around an organization without the help of a presenter. Yep. So what that book does is it says, make your visual aids sparse and cinematic. But if you are going to circulate something and want it to make sense without you, yeah. make it a little bit like a magazine. Like we give tools, tips to really make it skimmable, make the hierarchy clear. Like yep. in, in five slides, you could just say everything you said in an hour long talk and they can yes. skim it and read it quickly. And then uh, resonate is what my TED talk is based on. So yeah. yeah. Questions about that one? I loved. I loved yeah, no, it, it, it's powerful. And so the whole area of color, right? It's it's interesting because I'm on LinkedIn every day. I'm probably posting four or five things on LinkedIn, and I'm consciously now using. I use a lot of imagery, right? So, for example, yesterday I posted. Yesterday morning, I woke up and I said, "I need to." Every Monday morning, I need to post some thoughts around. I call it Mindset Matters Monday, right? So every Monday morning, I'm going to post something about mindset and mindset growth. And I posted a beautiful image of a brain with lots of lovely cogs and wheels, colorful stuff. And I, with, within a very short period of time, I had about 10,000 people view that, right? And then I did a similar one today, same wording in this, but, but less color and far fewer viewers. Now, I know there's the whole issue of LinkedIn algorithm and stuff, but... Yeah. To what extent it does color attract or detract people in communication, in different types of communication processes? That's interesting. I mean, there's definitely an algorithm up there. There's tips and tricks on how to get uh, Absolutely. views. But I noticed the same thing. Like, I don't, I don't post personal stuff, but I was playing with my son, my grandson, sorry. And we were stacking. We were just playing Legos. Next thing I knew, I had actually made a descent. I took all the Legos, sorted them by color, and then ranked them, like stack yeah. ranked them, just like you would a, a chart. Colorful. And then he had his little finger, a little puppet on the tip of his finger. Yeah. I'm like, oh, funny. I can't even play my grandson. But I posted the picture. It's like, same thing. 60,000 views. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't even put anything in it. So I think it's yeah. human, the human element in it. I think color that pops is very important. Um, I also think if it's uh, something that um, is a break to the day, right? Um, Same thing. I posted, I just held up a newspaper, took a picture of it and put it native in LinkedIn. So that one was black and white. And I have to say that one performed more than my colorful one. So I think, I don't know. I think something about people seeing into your home right now, you giving them exposure has been what's worked for me. But yeah, color works. I'm weird about brains with ears. I mean, it just always is inside the brain. It's yeah, gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like all yeah. But yeah, so, color is important. Contrast is important. What What about the whole area of connecting? I mean, uh, you know, I I think I mentioned before that I'm running. I posted today. I'm running a the world's first global online summit on equality in leadership with Elizabeth Suarez from the states and mm-hmm. and. Um, the whole area of gender balance, right? So we're not going to get into a conversa- deep conversation about diver- diversity and gender, but, but, but d- d- does the feminine and the masculine respond to communication in PowerPoints, in presentations, in different ways? Can you generalize or have yeah, you seen... I, mean, I haven't done... You're the second person to ask me about gender and I haven't done enough study. I think, I think like if I was to just like, blah, 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 and just guess, I... It, yes. I Offend some, like last thing I would want to do is make a stereotypical kind of answer. Yeah, I know from my own way of working, and I'm in a lot of different groups. So I'm in heavily male groups, yeah. heavily female groups. Um, I would say that, and this is just my own observation. It's not yeah. based in science. I would say that a lot of women are, are very candid, very honest. We are very, we very readily tell stories that would yep. show people insights into our heart. Yep. Whereas the meetings that are more um, gender mixed, um, I noticed for the first time, and it's never happened to me because I'm always the outside consultant. What happens in the one that's gender mixed, there's a lot of academics on this particular one because it's a lot of book yeah. authors based in research. And the women pass the mic. And I, I'd never seen it. I'd heard of it. It'd be like, oh, I, I'd really like to hear what Nancy thinks about that. And I, I want Jennifer to speak up or whatever. And Th- th- I've never seen that happen. Sure enough, then I'm like, yeah. I take a breath and, and a dude swipes the answer or whatever. So I've never yeah. seen that before, but now I'm experiencing it. So that's been good for me to actually sit in this. Wow. wow. But there's a lot of really empathetic um, uh, and tender and beautiful guys too. So I just, yeah. 
I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't it's, know. It's and too easy to generalize. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's, I think it's too easy to generalize. In terms of nuanced humans, I and mean, we're all so different. And yeah, we can honor that. Yeah, no, I think you're right. But back to storytelling. It's funny because I, you know, I lecture around deal making and sales and negotiation and sales resilience and confidence in business and growth and all that stuff. And so, I, and there's a slide I give and which shows there's a study from London School of Business that uh, that you know if you use facts, facts. If you use numbers to try and sell, five percent of people remember. If you use um, if you use images, it's about twenty to twenty five percent. But if you use a story, it's eighty percent, something like that. I mean, is that is that? I mean, is that what you see, or is that is again, is that too much of a generalization? Does it depend on the quality? Yeah, that's of the actually product? based in research. Um, yeah. Chip Heath, uh, the author of Made to Stick, um, did a study at Stanford, and he gave yeah. all of the students uh, facts. I think he gave them statistics. Um, I believe it was around crime, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And um, he had everybody choose to relay the information in the way they thought was most effective. And, yeah. and the ones who wrapped the statistics in a, sh- in a story, yeah. they remembered it, like 62% recollection. And the ones yeah. that just stated the stacks, it was 5%. I know it's above 60. I believe it's 62 or 63%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you're seeing the same thing in any sort of information. You can take something that seems to be sterile or factual and, and keep, it, keep it factual. Yeah. But when you frame it in a three act structure, it's the same facts. Yeah. Just in the framing of it, people will remember it more readily. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it's amazing that more people don't do that. Like, I mean, I, 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 it's just incredible. So in terms of, in terms of your business and in terms of, you know, how, of course, nobody can predict the future because things are so uncertain, but, but what's, what's next for you, for your business, for, you can't, you must, are you looking at more books or what, what, you, you must be constantly thinking of stuff. What's next? What's, okay. what's in the next year or two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to put it. I think this is an opportunity for every company to kind of go through a, a rebirth, for yep. lack of a better word. So my own organization, 32 years old, and we've been, this is our eighth reinvention. So reinvent, reinvent, wow. constantly yeah. be at this different place in the future where, you're, where your clients are going to be. Yep. And this season is reshaping where my clients are going to be in 18 months, what they yep. believe, what they behave, what they consume. And so we're really taking this opportunity to reshape completely reshape the business, which has been really, really energizing for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do definitely have three three books um inside inside of my heart. Um <laughs> and I think I'll just always write. I get a lot I never knew I was a writer. I get yeah. a lot of joy in writing. Yeah. Um, Right now, I'm kind of jumping in as a department leader in the organization, and yeah. um, I started in this position, so it feels really full circle. I'm kind of doing <laughs> um, strategy, client facing, client success. So I'm going to just kind of build that whole yeah, energy yeah. And, and print my heart on it. And I think in the process, there'll be IP there, and so yeah. I'm excited about that to just jump in as an operational leader and possibly create some operational tools that other people yeah. can use. And, um, and I'm getting old, so I'm gonna need to stop this at some point. But in the meantime, while I'm enjoying it, I'm gonna keep doing it. That that's the key. That's the key. So you think there's more writing in you? I mean, I, I've got a couple of books in me, and you know, I, I've interviewed a number of people, you know, thought leaders, and for them, it's about passing that knowledge and that. The, one of the common things that I get in most of these interviews is there's a real passion and enthusiasm and real energy in what you do. I mean, you can't run a business like yours for 32 years and be, you know, number two global guru in communication just by being, you know, a a kind of a boring factual person. You have to have that energy and love for it. Do you agree with that? That, that, that self-inspiration is the key, don't you think? Yeah. And I think, I think what I do is I'm passionate about it. So if you think about communicating, especially the spoken word, right, we are experts in the spoken word. If you want to put like a bigger umbrella, so much happens when people impassioned plea, when they give a great talk, when they inspire the troops, it creates so much momentum. And I'd rather be that person than be the one that's trying to get clicks and eyeballs through digital (laughs) marketing. Our firm just gets to solve some of the biggest communication problems at scale, and so yeah, yeah. it's just an honor. Like it's a humbling, it's humbling, and it's a real honor to yeah. sit, uh, sit right now. And, it, and it's not without 
a lot of respect. It's almost like, um, it's almost like it, it doesn't feel fair that I get to sit in this seat, right? And I wake up every day grateful that I'm the yeah. one sitting here that gets to do these amazing, amazing, amazing things for the world. So I but, don't take it lightly. But that gratitude is the key. So just just flipping this to the final question, if you were going to be talking of gratitude and, and, and self-respect, if you were going to go back to a younger version of Nancy and whisper in, say, that 20-year-old Nancy's ear about two or three things, words of wisdom to to set you up for success in life, what would you whisper to that younger version of you? I would say your marriage is going to be amazing. I would say be kinder to yourself. (laughs) And I would say create three things so you have answers for Simon. That would be my favorite thing. (laughs) (laughs) I used to play. I think the big thing is, is how you played as a kid will become what you get to do for your living. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, I was, it was not a great upbringing and I found an old abandoned desk. I put it in my room. Yeah. I played, I played like I had a job, which wow. was back in the early sixties. You just didn't do. And so wow. I would increase things and file things. I would mow yeah. lawns. And there was a little true value hardware store and I would buy little office supplies and I would put wow. them in my little desk. And I just, when I played as a kid, it looks a heck of a lot like how I work now every day. So. That is that is so spooky because I, <laughs> we, we're still recording this, but I've I've heard nobody else ever say exactly the way I used to play. I used to improvise and I used to, you know, take apples from a local field and set up a local stall and sold them. And I would do surveys of cars and, and I, I would do all this sort of stuff. And today... Basically, uh, you know, I you know, I do everything. I'm a coach, consultant, author. I have passive income streams, and I love it that way. Like, I, and so I am a reflection of the way I was as a kid. And I've never heard anybody say the same thing. Never. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. So, how do people find out more about you and your company and your work and your books? Yeah, I have a website, Duarte.com. There's another Duarte.com/slash/Nancy where you can get a bunch of free resources from me. Yeah. I connect anyone on LinkedIn. At Nancy Duarte on Twitter, at Duarte is the company. Um, That's perfect. Nancy, it's been great chatting with you, and uh, I know we'll keep in touch. And, uh, you know, try and stay calm and serene, and gratitude is the key. So it's been wonderful talking to you. Thanks a lot. I really had a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye Bye-bye.